like positive people. Rocking out. As you saw it, that is a nice sunrise. How about that? That's what I need to give me my second wind. <laughs> if I feel like I'm nodding off, that sunrise comes up just in time to keep me going so I can make it all the way in. Um, And uh, all my best and warmest greetings to everybody out there, of course. Can't name everybody. I did want to mention, I don't know if I have mentioned it before, a new subscriber named Carol. I noticed that a little bit ago. And uh, always an occasion here, so... Thank you, Carol, and welcome. Uh, this humble work for what well being that we all do. To try to save our people by the skin of our teeth. Um, so, I started out with a little rock music there on purpose uh, because that's one of two main points that I want to make here. And maybe a third possibly, uh, depending on how long I ramble. But real quick, to start off with rock and roll music. Now I do, I have to confess that I listen to a fair amount of rock, classic rock, of course. And we all can probably agree it's pretty darn good music. I mean, I would say, as I think we all would, that is real music. It actually has instruments, <laughs> guitars, drums, brass instruments, woodwinds, horns, saxophones. You know, a lot 
lot of those rock bands had lots of instruments. I mean, the Rolling Stones had a saxophone player from Texas who was not as well known. And uh, all kinds of instruments in most of those bands back then. So they were very, very truly musically talented. And that's something we people of the West can be proud of. We've always had really good musicians back classical music all the way up to classic rock and beyond so talking about classic rock here you know from the 70s and stuff and uh, truly great music truly talented music talented singers and all the rest of it uh, and it sounds absolutely fantastic compared to the music now which the music now, as we can probably all agree, is not even real music at all. I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's just 0% music and 100% noise. And it's just there to, <laughs> to annoy people like us, like us white western folk, that have a taste for beauty and harmony. There's nothing harmonious about the so-called music nowadays. In fact, it is anti-harmonious, I think, specifically to disrupt brainwave patterns and so forth. So, compared to the trash that's being played now, 70s rock sounds like the renaissance, you know, peak of civilization. Um, but, as good a music as it is, and I truly will say that it is good music, musically, but uh, rock and roll back then was used, as we all probably also know, to, um, to degrade and destroy a lot of Western culture. And that was one of the, the, the seductive things about it. It was truly good music. And this is what the anti-white tiny hats do a lot. They'll take something that's truly good, truly um, attractive, and, you know, good music, actual talented musicians, Western people. Uh, they do this with acting, too, in the movies. Actually, real talented actors and actresses theater, every form of entertainment, you name it, they'll take real talent, which a lot of it comes from white western people, and they'll just put put a toxic message into it. And they do this all the time, as a lot of us know, and that's, that's, that's how they mix in poison with something that is truly sweet and truly good. So, <laughs> that's what makes it... Uh, hard to um, avoid. So, talking about classic rock, a great example of this. Truly good music in many, many ways. But the anti-whites, what they do, the tiny hats, is they take control of things. So they don't necessarily. I mean, they don't. They don't create the music and a lot of this media. If it's any good, they don't create it. <laughs> um, they'll take existing talent, something that already is good, like like the Western musicians from back in those days were really, really good. And it was kind of a golden age, I would say, for music, and a lot of people romanticize that era of the 70s for the music in particular, had some of the greatest music, and I, I will agree with that, as I think a lot of us would, it's some of the greatest music of all time, and it came out of the West. And it was a golden age, I think. It seemed like it was a time where the creativity was really flowing in the West, in America, and, you know, there was some positive messages in the music, but there was also some, some bad messages that got put in there, I think a lot of it by anti-whites that controlled the record labels. Uh, 
and um, so this this uh, this era was was a golden age of sorts and produced truly truly great music but sadly this is the real tragedy of it even that even something that was kind of a pinnacle of music a crescendo that was one of the peaks of music in probably all of history you know and it was a high point but sadly the anti-white tiny hats had thorough control of this country at that time already and uh, you know had most of the executive positions at the record companies so they could have the final say on a lot of stuff and obviously they couldn't create the music but you know they were the bosses that had to be appeased with the money and musicians had to pacify them you know to get their records out so sadly this is a great tragedy but it was uh, a lot of it was had toxins inserted into it by anti-whites a lot of them wearing tiny hats and that song so rock and roll I think is a good example of that from that era um, there was like the song I just had play in there um, <laughs> that's just one example of many many countless examples that we all know of songs from back then that sound really good. That was a song that was really good musically. It took a lot of true musical talent to produce. That was a song by the band Fog Hat, um, which a lot of you probably know. And I just, in the past few years, became aware of them. Fog Hat, classic, you know, 70s rock band. And um, you know, guitar, drums, the whole nine yards musically, good singing and all that. Just great, great musical talent there. And it sounds really good because it is good music. The good music is naturally appealing. It has a nice beat, a nice rhythm and your ear just likes it. It's just pleasing to the ear. Nothing we can do about that. But, sadly, that song is, is an example, pretty good example, by Fog Hat of a song that has a, a toxic message. And there's a lot of those toxic messages in rock and roll from back then. Sadly, um, not all of them, but a lot of those songs did have toxic messages. Not nearly as toxic as today. We wouldn't quite recognize them as being so bad compared to today. But that's how it goes. Every generation gets progressively worse until, you know, when you look back, it always seems better. Nowadays, when we look back to the 70s, it seems a lot better. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that the 70s were that great. Overall, um, there were plenty of problems going on back then, as most of us know. But, uh, but it just shows how bad things are now, is what it says. How incredibly bad things are now. Um, you know, the... the the music of the 70s, most people say, was about peace, love, and harmony, and hey, what could be wrong with that? Free love, but, you know, 
one thing about free love is that usually meant sexual promiscuity back in those days. And of course, what the tiny hats, the anti-whites, they've always done is they, they, um, they euphemize things. Euphemize, euphemizations. They put on nice sounding words and things that really aren't so good. Take feminism, what do they call that? They call that liberation, liberating women. Well, who, who, who would oppose liberation? Who doesn't like liberation? Who thinks that sounds bad? Nobody, it always sounds like a good thing. Liberation, liberty, freedom. Those are just blanket, good sounding words. So the anti-white tiny hats, they're very good at knowing how to put nice sounding words on things that are not nice at all. They know that they gotta put a nice package on it and that if they put freedom on it or liberation or anything like that or love, you know, or any of these just general, you know, euphemistic, nice sounding words, they know that people are just gonna probably take it in and that people need to have that nice looking package. Even if what's inside the package is pure poison, if it's wrapped up real nice, they know people will probably take it. And uh, sadly, they're very, very incredibly good at marketing and they can sell complete toxic trash <laughs> to, uh, to people, especially white people, which they've done for so long. So, um, you know, so the, the, the 70s music is another example. They say, oh, it was about peace, love, and harmony, and who could have freedom, and who could oppose that, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, back then, there was feminism getting in the early stages back then, but there was, you know, sexual liberation, and all these songs that were kind of about free love and stuff back then. They say, hey, this is love, love, not war. What could be wrong with that? Well, <laughs> they packaged it up nice to say that, that, you know, love was always good. Love was always the answer. And that means go around having sex with whoever you please. Well, as we all can see now, that is completely toxic that is completely destructive to a culture, that is completely destructive to a people. That kind of thing is what brings an entire race, an entire group of people, an entire civilization, all the way to the ground. That kind of stuff was Rome during its fall, when it was all chaos, when it was collapsing. As everybody knows, when Rome was, was collapsing in free fall, and there was no more hope for it, that was when there was sexual promiscuity everywhere. That's, that's a sign of free fall, total collapse, you know, kind of almost beyond hope. That's every civilization, that's a rule of civilization. When that kind of stuff is going on, that's, that's a very bad sign. And um, so, <laughs> but they, the, the, the clever tiny hats sold this to, to white people like it was some kind of good thing. Oh, embrace it, don't worry about it, it's good. And that's what they do all the time. Things that are destroying us, things that are destroying our actual existence as a race. Some of the most destructive things on this earth, they sell to white people as some kind of good thing. So they're very good at that. They don't, they don't like to be direct with anything. They don't like to declare open war. They don't like to say that Okay, we're declaring war on you whites and we want you out of here. They don't do anything direct. They, they would rather sell it and get people to accept the poison that will kill them unwittingly. That's pretty much their M.O., as we all know. So, they do this for a lot of reasons. If they're direct, then, then obviously we would fight back. 
That's one of the main reasons. And, the other, and there's other reasons for it too. They're just deceptive by nature. So, you know, that was a weapon the whole time. All that sexual promiscuity, what they call sexual liberation and women's liberation, which went hand in hand with that. All that stuff was pure destruction and it was just a weapon. Nothing more and nothing less than a weapon. And to take down our entire civilization and our entire people. It doesn't get any more destructive than that. And they called it all these nice sounding names. So, never meant for anything more than or less than destruction as we all can see now. They, they, so that kind of thing, you know, was sexual promiscuity and stuff, that was what was being promoted in with all the free, the supposedly free love stuff back in the 70s, in my opinion. And they were talking about free love and liberation and love your neighbor, peace, love, and harmony, make love, not war. All those things, in my opinion, were purely destructive to destroy our culture and destroy our people. Uh, because what was the result of that? Well, it destroys um, monogamous relationships. It destroys marriages. It dissuades people from getting married at all. And then um, it encourages infidelity amongst uh, couples, men and women. It, um, and then ultimately it destroys the family unit. It destroys families and dissuades people from even starting families. And of course, what does that lead to? A lower population. <laughs> Less kids and a lower population, which was the whole goal. And they had many prongs of attack back then they were talking about overpopulation to whites. That was one of the big weapons they used. And then they, they had they had like a triple prong attack. They were blasting whites with, the world is too populated. You whites need to have less kids. And then they combined that with a supposed environmental crisis. Oh, you need to do it for Mother Earth. And all the hippies really loved that. They ate that up. And uh, they felt like they were doing a righteous thing by not passing on their genes to their progeny, foregoing with that, foregoing with having kids for the sake of Mother Earth, for the planet. They bought into that big time. They bought into feminism. They bought into, you know, the sexual liberation stuff, free love. And, um... families and resulted in less kids and now what are they saying they're coming out now with article after article after article just nauseatingly so I see articles several articles every single day now about this stuff about population about Know, the climate, about the feminism, the victories of feminism, and so forth. So now what are they doing? Now they're saying, <laughs> joke's on you white folks. It was all a scam. That's essentially what they're saying now. They're coming out with articles and saying, hey, look, look at how great it is. America is so much more diverse now. That's what the demographic changes show. It's just so much more diverse, and they're all celebrating that, which 
which of course diversity just means less white as we know so they're saying hey look at how much less white things are now look at how how much fewer white people there are now that is so fantastic that's what they're saying every time they say diversity as we all know so they're they're celebrating erasing white people as much as they have since in the last 50 plus years and they're saying they're saying um, and of course now they're saying there's underpopulation and there needs to be even more immigrants keep the flow going increase the flow constantly and they're also saying feminism was a victory they're still saying it's a good thing for whites to decline. So, how much do whites have to listen to this before whites realize, hey, wait a minute, this is all just erasing us and it's not good? How much does it take? How much do they have to gloat about erasing white people? Or whites realize that it's all euphemisms it's not good at all and as I, I there was an article I saw specifically about the victory of feminism written by a female professor at Colorado in Colorado feminist no doubt and she said uh, the article literally was titled the victory of feminism is largely responsible for the low white population now. That's what the article said right in the title. It said, feminist victory is to get credit for low white population. And the article, this feminist female professor Colorado teaching sociology teaching pure poison at that university in Boulder, Colorado she says, not to worry though folks, white folks, this is a good thing, they're still saying that now they're still saying this is a good thing don't worry, even though the population of whites is lower than it's ever been a good thing it's just showing how successful feminism has been and they're saying that's wonderful the whole article said whites finally got the point white women they finally got the message to have less kids that they should have a career first and that they should you know wait till they're ready wait till later in life and not even have kids at all if they if they so choose and they're saying now in this article she says oh this is so wonderful white women have finally gotten the feminist message and they're 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 getting it they're having less kids or no kids they're having careers and look it's it's making them so much happier look how happy they are well obviously they're not happy and obviously this is not good, as she says. So she's saying, look, feminism worked. It's a feminist victory. The result, white Western women had less kids, are having less kids than ever today. So great job. Good job for getting that message, white women. Keep it up. Keep going after that career. That'll that'll make you happy. Yeah, right, as we all know. So they're just gloating about it. They're saying, yep, it was feminism. That's that that was there just to decrease the population of whites. And it worked. So <laughs> Congratulations, feminists. You did your job, and the white population is at an all-time low. Let's celebrate. 
and this feminist female professor is probably white. Just my guess. She's saying, don't worry, white. You should celebrate it too. You should celebrate your own decline too. Don't worry about it. Don't don't worry that your population is at a low. That that's that's cause for celebration. That's a good thing, white people. So they're telling us whites that we need to constantly embrace our own erasure. And a lot of whites fall for this. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess that's supposed to be good. Okay. Well, as we all know, that's never good. So they're gloating about it in every way imaginable with the feminism, with the immigration, with the overpopulation propaganda, with the climate change propaganda, global warming, global cooling, environmental this, that, or whatever. Save the animals, save the whales, save the ice at the North Pole. Do everything at the expense of white people. Do everything, save everything but white people. No matter what, keep white people going down and everything is hunky-dory. That's what the anti-whites say. And they're saying now, it was all just to erase you white people. Joke's on you. You thought it was really about the climate? You thought it was really about women's rights? You thought it was really about liberation? You thought it was really about diversity? You thought it was really about kumbaya? Nope. It was just to get rid of you white folks. And guess what? Things are less white than ever. So, victory! You whites should just celebrate too. Just join the party. Might as well. That's what they're saying now cockier than ever. to deal with that and um, we can still enjoy the music I think because it really was good music but understanding that that's what it was there for that's what a lot of it not all of it but a lot of it was used for that um, and uh, I remember I had just one little quick example of this. I had a professor in high school 